here we are. I think I might have this thing fixed. Would that be nice? I hope you people are getting this one. Huh? Hey, I want to talk to you this morning about this is how pastors are supposed to voice activate the blessing of God. If you haven't been getting uh, these Periscope messages and now you're getting it, send me a message and let me know. Amen? I want to talk to you about uh, most people don't realize that pastors and priests are actually commanded by God to voice activate the blessing in the lives of people. To voice activate the blessing in the lives of people. And this is how they're supposed to do it. Numbers chapter 6. And I read this uh, probably about 18 years ago, 16, 18 years ago. I read this and I was uh, studying the blessing. And I read this. And I, I thought, you know what? I'll bet this still applies. God said to Moses, he said, this is how you shall teach Aaron and his sons to bless the children. This is what you'll say. Tell Aaron and his sons, who were also priests, to do it. Periscope is back on. Praise God, huh? Oh, man. I had to do a lot of research to get this. What happened was I got a new phone, and when they reinstalled everything, somehow or another, they got the Periscope message all discombobulated. But now we're back, and we're stronger than ever, so everybody can see it. Praise God, huh? But anyway, getting back to the blessing, uh... God told Moses, and I, and, I, and I was studying about the blessing, and I read this. And when I read this, when I read this, it, it, God says to Moses, this is how you shall teach Aaron and his sons to bless the people. You sh they shall say. He says, he says, they shall say unto the children of Israel, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Now God says that when, that when the priest does this, they are actually putting his name on the people. Do you know that every one of you people, when I speak that blessing over you, I am putting God's name on you. Is that what he said? You know, I, I'm, I'm what they call a fundamentalist. Now, I know the word fundamentalist has gotten a bad rap, but a fundamentalist is nothing more than a person who believes God's word, word for word. I believe it word for word. For example, Jesus said you must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven, to understand the kingdom. I'm telling you what, I believe that with all my heart. If you ain't born again, you're not going to heaven. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. I believe that with all my heart. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that have faith in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I believe that with all my heart. I'm telling you what, people get healed. I just did a, a message a few minutes ago about a brain dead woman being healed. You can go to my website and see that. A brain dead woman was totally healed. People today who... Go to my website, increasenow.com, are going to be able to see that because it will be on there very shortly. If it, if, it may already be on there because I uploaded it. And once I upload it, it takes just a couple minutes to get it on there. This one's going to be on my website too. Glory to God. 
So uh, you can call me a fundamentalist. If you believe God's word is true, you're also a fundamentalist. Now, I got a hold of this about 18 years ago, just about the time we moved into this church over on O'Galley Boulevard. It was the old First Baptist Church, and they moved out. They built a new church, and that church was sitting vacant. And we moved out of a small storefront into that big church. It was a big church then, held about 300 people. We moved over there with 15 or 20 people, but it grew. And it grew very quickly. And we had a wonderful church over there. And then a funeral home shared the church with us for their services and went behind our back and bought the church. That was my fault. I, I missed it on that deal. That was my fault. But you know what? We went by that church every day and I said, Lord, avenge me of my adversary. The funeral home people were not my adversary. The devil stole our church. And God did. He has given us two beautiful churches since. Right now we have a beautiful church right on the beach. God has avenged us of our adversary. Glory to God. But about the time we moved into that, I got a hold of this. Numbers chapter 6. Where God commanded the priest to speak a certain blessing and he wanted it done word for word. This is how you shall do this, he said. I said, whoa. I'd never heard anybody do that. And I got to thinking. Where in the Bible, since Numbers chapter 6, did God say you don't have to do that anymore? Or well, he doesn't. People say, well, Pastor Jim, that's Old Testament. Yeah, so are the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are also Old Testament, part of the law. There's parts of the law we still have to go by, folks. Thou shalt not kill. Hello. It's not okay to kill now because we're under grace. It's not okay to commit adultery now because we're under grace. It's not okay to steal now because we're under grace. It's not okay to have any other gods before you now because we're under grace. No. That still applies. Use your head. We've got to use some common sense here. Amen? Well, I thought, you know what? <clears throat> I'll bet you we still need to do that. So I started doing it. <clears throat> now, we have people in our church that were there 18 years ago. So, at the end of every service, I would get up my Bible, put on my glasses, and I would say, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Have a nice week. We'll see you next Sunday. Don't forget Wednesday evening service. 7 o'clock. Out the door they go. But the more I did it, the more I got to thinking, you know what? I have the authority to do this. Well, I'm telling you people, the blessings literally rained down on our church. <clears throat> people were blessed to the extent that finally one day, a couple years later, <clears throat> Mary and I sat down. I said to Mary, I said, honey, sit down. We need to talk. Do you ever have one of those we need to talk moments? I said, something is going on in our church. I said, there's something going on in our church I have never seen before. I have never seen a church blessed financially to the extent these people in our church are blessed. I've never seen this. And not just a couple of them. People were becoming millionaires in our church. Two people became millionaires. Other people were getting hundreds of thousands of dollars. People with good jobs were getting jobs making twice as much money. One lady sitting in our church, 
I was talking about how God wants to bless us. And she says, what if you're in a dead end job? And I said, there is no such thing as a dead end job with God. That, I'm telling you, that week, somebody walked into the restaurant where she was waiting on tables and offered her a job making more than twice as much money as she was making. She came back. She said, Pastor Jim, you were right. There is no such thing as a dead end job. I'm telling you what, you can be out there mowing lawns and somebody will walk up to you and offer you a job making 10 times what you're making. There is no such thing. When, you, when you're under the blessing of God, there's no such thing as a dead-end job. I kept speaking this. I still do. Our people, the people in our church <clears throat> and our partners are blessed like you absolutely cannot imagine. Supernatural. God said, when you speak that blessing, you're putting my name on the people. He says, he says, and they shall put my name. They, the priest, actually puts the name of God on the people. Actually puts God's name on the people when they speak that blessing. <clears throat> How would you like to be walking around all week with the name of God on you? That's what happens when somebody speaks that blessing over you in faith. Oh my goodness. Tell your pastor, please, speak that blessing over us. I'm telling you what, I tell people this. If your pastor is not speaking that blessing over you in faith, you're in the wrong church. You're in the wrong place, folks. He is commanded to do that by God. Find somebody who will. If you can't find anybody else, hook up with us. Because if you hook up with this ministry, then I have the authority to speak that blessing over you. Amen. Glory to God. First, go to your pastor. Say, listen, it says here you're supposed to do this. Tell him. If he says, well, if he doesn't have faith to do it, I'm telling you, you're in the wrong place, folks. <clears throat> people get mad at me for saying that. But it's a fact. It's how I get people healed. It's how I get people blessed. I'm telling you. Because I speak that blessing. Numbers chapter 6. Was that good today? Go to my website, increasenow.com. I'm telling you, we can get the blessing of God into you. Glory to God, huh? Hey, go out there today and make it a great day. A good day, a happy day. And remember this. God's word will save your soul Heal your body and pay your bills.